Today I wanted to make a recommendation for getting your very first flash for your Olympus camera. So long story short, it's the uh, Godox TT350 together with its complimentary X1T radio trigger. And I gave this a lot of thought because there's so many flashes out there that you can get for the camera, you know, uh, at lower price points and, and some at much higher price points. But I think at $130 with these two things combined, uh, it's really your best bang for the buck. And it'll also let you expand into all kinds of other photography and different flashes within the Godox system because they have so many different flashes as well. And once you have that one radio trigger, you don't need to buy another trigger. So what I want to do first is just show you the picture that comes straight out of camera with no flash. And then I'm going to show you a picture uh, together with the pop-up flash that's on the camera. Or if you have one of the small attached ones that come with like the M5 or the M1. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to show you a picture with the Godox flash system. And then we'll get creative from there. So let's take a look at the basic gear I'm using today. It's just the M10 Mark II with the 14 to 42 kit lens. And just ignore the rest of this rig here. That's strictly just for this video. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a picture straight out of camera. And I'm basically, I did a full factory reset and I'm an aperture priority at f3.5. So the lens is wide open at 14 millimeters. So as you can see from the super control panel, everything is pretty much stocked. The only thing I'm gonna do is change the uh, shutter to uh, custom shutter mode so I can do a self portrait. So let's go ahead and take a picture. So if we look at the picture's information, you know, you can see right away that all the highlights are blown out, but my face is fairly well exposed uh, relative to the scene, but it's still, we can do better. So let's go ahead and uh, turn the pop-up flash on. So, you, you know, you just pop up the flash here, just like that. So if we look at this picture now, you can see that, uh, you know, it did fill in my face a little bit better, but somehow the sky and my shirt looks even a little bit more blown out than it was before. And that's because to use the flash on the camera, it had to slow the shutter or speed the shutter speed. I'm sorry, slow the shutter speed down to one two fiftieth of a second, because that's the maximum sync speed of the flash on the camera. And, uh, you know, that, that can be very, very limiting. So the on-camera flash is pretty much useless outdoors. I mean, when you're indoors, it's okay. You probably don't need to be that fast. But outdoors, you need a relatively fast shutter, particularly if you want to be shooting wide open at f3.5. So let me show you what we can do when we just add the Godox TT350 flash. So I'm just going to slide this on. I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to put it in full TTL mode, which means it's just going to be basically full auto and work together with the camera to take a better picture. And then also I have the uh, zoom function also set to auto. So if I'm zooming the lens in and out, it'll adjust the uh, output of the flash angle appropriately. Now, if we look at the screen now, you'll notice that the shutter speed is sticking to 1 1,000th of a second, 1 over 1250. Uh, it's not jumping back down to 1 250th of a second. That's because this flash is what they call high speed sync compatible or FP, focal plane, whatever they want to call it. Uh, but it allows you to shoot at much higher shutter speeds. You'll also see the little indicator there, FP, telling you that the camera is going to be able to shoot at these shutter speeds together with the flash. So let's go ahead and take a picture here. I'm not going to change anything else. All I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the flash head and rotate it slightly and maybe tilt it up just a little bit so that it's you know more right on my face so as you can see this gave you much more balanced exposure the sky is not blown out my face is properly exposed and well lit and my shirt it's a little bit hot because it's you know it's a bright white shirt but overall i'm really happy with this exposure so as you can see, this flash really improved the uh, overall photo. And uh, this is why I recommend you get the flash. And remember, we're doing everything in full auto at this point. I haven't even tried to get creative. So let's try and do something a little bit creative. 
So all I've done here is taken the flash off and put the radio trigger on and I have them synced up so that this trigger will fire this flash because this trigger will fire multiple flashes. It has you know a lot of capabilities so I'm not going to be able to do a full tutorial on this but just know that these things are synced up and that we're still in full auto TTL mode. So we're not going to do any thinking. We're going to let the camera do all the work. Now the other thing I have here is my little flash stand and I only have this out today. I mean I recommend getting one but the only reason I have this out today is because I want to kind of imitate if you were one person holding the flash like this up in the air pointing at your subject and then holding the camera up to your eye and taking the pictures. So just pretend that that's the case and that I'm not using all of this other stuff. So I'm just going to mount this here and I can hold it up about this high. All right, so let's point this down. All right, so what you want to do is point the flash at the person and ask the person if they can see the flash is looking straight at them. That way you know the flash is directly on them. Because sometimes it's hard to tell from behind the camera if you have it pointed correctly. So just ask your subject, you know, is the flash pointing right at you? So I think if you look at this picture here, it's just a little better, right? Just slightly uh, than the previous picture. And that's because, you know, now you have the light coming from a different direction rather than straight on. So it looks a little bit less flashy, if, if that's a word. Next thing I want to do is just do your typical professional portrait. So I'm going to get out my 45 millimeter F1.8 prime, and then I'm going to take the flash with me and add an umbrella uh, and see how much better the picture will look. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, now that I have the 45 millimeter prime on, is I'm going to open the lens up wide open. Uh, meaning I'm going to go down to f1.8. And as you can see, the, we've reached the maximum shutter speed that this camera is capable of. And now it's blinking, meaning the camera is not able to speed the shutter up any faster to get what it thinks will be the proper exposure. So. First thing I like to do is I'm just going to try and do a lower ISO. Oops. And let me go over here. Let's see if just going to ISO low will do the trick. Yeah, that did the trick there. So now we're at one two thousandth of a second, just going simply to ISO low. If that didn't work, you know, we're in ISO low and we're still blinking, particularly on a very bright day. If it's brighter than like today, you can always just increase the aperture like so until you get to the shutter speed that you need. So let's take one picture without the flash and just see how it looks. All right, very good. That time it detected my face and then, you know, focused properly and exposed for my face. But then again, now it's blown out the sky. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio trigger. And then I'm just going to push the uh, test button here. Make sure that the flash is firing and everything is good. So it did. Let's go ahead and try one, another shot just in full auto. So as you can see from this image, the camera did a much better job of exposing properly and the light is much softer. However, what I'm noticing is that the uh, exposure is still a little bit, it looks slightly underexposed to me. Uh, and that's because I believe in this outdoors, in this very bright outdoors, the flash did not have enough power to uh, overcome the light and meaning actually overcome the, the high shutter speed with the low ISO combination. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera back into auto ISO. And then let's try again. As you can see, this picture is much nicer. I'm properly exposed. The background is not blown out. And uh, we still got that nice blurry background because that's the, that's the other reason that people like to use the uh, high speed sync or TTLs because they want to get that blurry background sometimes. You know, me personally, I kind of like to see everything in the scene, but uh, because I'm in the backyard, it's probably better that it's blurry because it's just, uh, you know, I haven't cut the grass and everything. So don't, don't judge though. Seriously, the helicopters here, why don't they just land in my backyard? Can you guys even hear me? <laughs> 